Hey, welcome back to the channel. I think Blend OS is one fix away from stopping me from distro hopping, maybe. For real, like, I'm gonna do it like a real overview of like how the distro works, some problems that I foresee encountering, what maybe I should get used to, and a few other things. Now, you're gonna wanna watch until the very end, especially because I have an idea of a workaround to one of my biggest points of contention that I think might be of interest to you. This is yet another flavor of Linux, another silver bullet solution that promises to unify all distros under one roof. Sounds great in theory, right? One system, it can run Arch, Fedora, Ubuntu, you name it, all in isolated containers. I mean, who doesn't love options? But as someone who's been bouncing around between distros since like forever, Ever, I gotta say there's one pretty big deal breaker for me that makes this Blend OS a bit of a lackluster experience. So before I start speaking all this geek speak, let's just talk about what is Blend OS. You probably got that it's a Linux distro. You also probably got that it aims to unify multiple distros by allowing users to run Arch Fedora Ubuntu all in isolated containers. It uses Podman for containerization, enabling users to install and run apps from different environments seamlessly. The system offers a lot of flexibility with the stability of a base OS while providing access to various package managers like app, DNF, and Pac-Man. Although it integrates multiple systems, it limits users to a single desktop at a time, making it a unique yet constrained, and I would even argue constricted choice for distro hoppers. Now, I know that I described it as being lackluster, right? Please do not get me wrong. Blint OS is really polished in a lot of ways. And when I first heard about it, I was genuinely really excited about it. I mean, the idea of combining different container systems like Fedora, Ubuntu, Arch, and even running multiple desktop environments, that sounded too good to be true. And it turns out I was right about that one. Now, I have to say that if you can't can't naturally figure out how to install blend os maybe sit this one out because it would just probably be better that you were a spectator if i'm being perfectly honest this installation only consists of a few clicks of a mouse a reboot and entering in some information it is literally that easy now initially i installed blend os xfce 4 version with the hopes of being able to install the tiling window manager now personally I don't see the impediment of installing a tiling window manager, but something very interesting happened that didn't work out so well because Xshara had limited capabilities on that particular version. That kind of baffled me. So I had to spin up the GNOME version, which worked as it was supposed to. Hmm, maybe I should just start using the GNOME desktop. No, that ain't happening. <laughs> You might be saying, hold on Shasta, there's a few terms flying around. Like, what exactly is Ikshara? Well, Ikshara simply is the system management tool in Blend OS. It allows users to set up specific system packages and manage environments. It offers a way to adjust Blend OS's core functionality without actually altering the base system. With all the fancy terminology, Xshara simply plays a key role in defining which desktop environments and packages are included in the user system. Okay, so this is kind of like the whole NixOS package manager list thing. Okay, Shasta, what's this containerization you keep speaking about? Well, that's the fun part. Because containerization is a way to put different programs in isolated environments, like putting them into separate boxes. Why is this useful, you ask? Well, many applications rely on different programming languages, different versions of programming languages, different libraries, different versions of libraries of those programming languages to function properly. And sometimes these versions can clash with each other. 
causing problems or can even prevent the ability for the program to compile properly. To prevent conflicts, maintainers often just remove the libraries required to compile the software at the end of the installation so everything runs smoothly and so other programs can also compile without too much difficulty. But there's another method of protection against this and that's containerization. That's where we put the apps inside boxes that don't interfere with your host system. Your host system, of course, being your actual computer. We sometimes refer to this as sandboxing. Lap packs, snap packs, app images. These are all clear examples of this. Anyway, back to the video. I did manage to figure out roughly how the containerization works rather painlessly. After all, I do personally use Podman for development. I have to tell you, this experience really isn't necessary because it is really straightforward. As I stated before, the containerization runs on Podman, which is a rootless container. Now, I'm sure if you continue down the developer rabbit hole, you'll know why Podman being a rootless container is so special. I'll leave that for another day, though, because I could probably talk about that ad infinitum. So, if you are interested in doing this from the terminal, this is kind of how you would do it. For all of us other human beings, if you go to the main menu, you can click on the systems icon, which is the BlendOS GUI or graphical user interface. You just install the container with like a click of a button and then install programs inside the container. And then at that point, you would just install it like you normally would from inside the shell of that container. Afterwards, if you want to access the app on the main system, you can list the program globally below the container in the interface. Now, I have to tell you, I installed Firefox on Arch Linux, and I'm not throwing Arch Linux under the bus. I could have installed Fedora or Debian. Anyway, I added it to launch globally. And even though it showed up in my menu, it wouldn't launch. And it wouldn't have launched for Fedora or Debian either. I don't. On the other hand, I installed NeoVim from Arch Linux and that worked just fine. It took a moment the first time it was executed though. And after that, it was rather seamless. If you don't want to access it globally automatically, you could just specify the containers from inside the main terminal. Say you installed HTOP on Fedora, you could access it from the main terminal, for example. And for Android apps, you do need the Wayland desktop installed to run them. And without Wayland, the Android subsystem just won't function correctly. So we won't be looking at that today because I'm not going to run anything Wayland in a virtual box. So we need to briefly just discuss the App Store. Now, BlendOS comes with flat packs by default, and I believe you can add other repositories or use app images and snaps. So I didn't spend a lot of time on that, and that's mainly for a couple of different reasons. Mainly because I'm not going to be using these systems. So two, they remove the App Store when you switch desktop environments. And since I'm never going to use the GNOME desktop, I'm never going to ask you to use the GNOME desktop. And I'm certainly not going to recommend you use a GNOME desktop. Well, that's just pretty pointless. So I don't really need to go over the App Store. Maybe you can find someone else. I installed NeoVim from the store, though, just because I wanted to use that instead of Nano and from the main terminal, which is not exactly my editor of choice, right? You know, whenever you hardwire Vim key bindings to your fingers, you just can't continue using Nano. This, something happens in that transition. So that said, the store is mostly functional, though. I did run into that glitch in the Flatpak apps where, like, NeoVim wouldn't launch from the main terminal. But I think other applications probably do launch by default. And I could get 
uh, NeoVim to launch. I just couldn't get it to launch from the main terminal. So when I set out to make this video, I initially thought I'd figured out how to install multiple desktop environments. I assumed I could make list items in the track parameters of the system.yaml file. That's how I'd approach this in Ansible or other tools when I deploy servers or run scripts and that sort of thing. But it turns out that the track parameter only accepts like a single string and not a list. So unfortunately, you can only have one desktop environment at a time. Now, as a side note, I'm just kind of curious because I noticed that Xar was written in Python. And I'm wondering if that track parameter is like a dictionary with like a key value pair. It looks like that's a possibility. So you could potentially iterate through a list of environments and register them in the user share accessions directory or wherever desktop environments are stored. I don't think it would be a big deal if I'm being perfectly honest. Anyway, some might think I'm being overly negative about BlendOS, but there's no room for hate on this channel, except for the GNOME desktop, especially the devs, because I think they are a bunch of pretentious pricks. But, and maybe even like the nano editor, right? I don't really like the nano editor, especially when you have like the Vim key bindings like hardwired into your fingers. You just can't use nano after that. <laughs> it's just really hard. I do find certain limitations like not being able to run heavy programs from containers or flat packs, not launching NeoVim in the main terminal. These are things that I would want to know about before actually trying it out on hardware. So I could, at that point, decide whether it was worth getting used to because this is, for a lack of a better term, how the distro works, right? That said, there's clearly been a lot of thought and effort put into this distro. If I had to rank it, I'd probably give it an 8.5 out of 10, and it would be easily a 9.5 out of 10 if I could install multiple desktop environments. At that point, I would genuinely consider sticking with it. If you only need a desktop environment that you run for weeks on end or something, this might indeed curb your distro hopper. For me, it, this is far from a distro hopper stopper. I have to say it's just one fix from being something special though. So what about you? Is this a distro hopper stopper for you? Comment down below. Okay, now guys, I was sipping my morning coffee and the solution hit me like a ton of bricks. Now, Originally, I mentioned you could just push a template system.yaml file to the root folder, but the finer details didn't actually occur to me. Now, I think I could create like a symlink from a system.yaml file located outside the root folder to one inside it. In fact, I could name it anything I wanted, right? Just as long as the root folder is system.yaml file. That way you could dynamically change the track value in the system.yaml file, update Xshara, and then reboot or log out and then log back in. To make it even smoother, you could write an alias in your bashrc or zshrc file, depending on your shell, in order to automate updating Xshara and then rebooting. That would give you a quick switch between the desktop environments, which honestly I don't think sounds terrible. I'll test this off camera if it works. I might put this on another computer for a longer test because, like I said, I really kind of like this distro and I would really like to test. The only other issue left is that Firefox in a container still won't launch properly. That's a little troubling, but maybe it's different on real hardware. What do you think? Leave a comment down below. Do you like my no-nonsense approach to distro reviews let me know and if you haven't subscribed like what are you waiting for now we had another thought there's another solution i didn't bring up that is one of distro bugs why not just run different apps in isolated environments like my browser for example with distro boxes or even just podman i could fire up individual apps without all the hassle so why am i not doing that is there a real reason not to use Podman or distro boxes? I mean, honestly, it seems like a no-brainer for managing separate environments on the same machine. I've also mentioned Bedrock Linux before, and that's another option that I've been entertaining. Bedrock lets me mix and match software from like different distros so that I don't have to commit to just one. 
But then there's a question. Why do I even need an uh, immutable operating system or distro? So far, no one has really sold me on this idea other than it kind of makes it bulletproof. But if I wanted to make my distro bulletproof, I could just install something like Slackware. I would be more inclined to trying Blend OS if the default desktop wasn't the GNOME desktop, or if I could install multiple desktop environments. What about you? What do you think of Blend OS? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear what it's if it's worth buying. And hey, security nerds, did I just mention the browser? Yeah, I can just casually give the pod its own IP address. Now that's what I call a secure idea.